wanderers from the beginning. We knew every stand of tree for a hundred miles. When the fruits or nuts were ripe, we were there. We followed the herds in their annual migrations. We rejoiced in fresh meat. Through stealth, feint, ambush, and main force assault, a few of us cooperating accomplished what many of us, each hunting alone, could not. We depended on one another. Then, as now, technology was the key to our survival. For 99.9% .9 of the time since our species came to be, we were hunters and foragers, wanderers on the savannas and the steppes. We were bounded only by the earth and the ocean and the sky. In the last 10,000 years, an instant in our long history, we've abandoned the nomadic life. For all its material advantages, the sedentary life has left us edgy, unfulfilled. Even after 400 generations in villages and cities, we haven't forgotten. The open road still softly calls, like a nearly forgotten song of childhood. We invest far off places with a certain romance. Your own life, or your bands, or even your species might be owed to a restless few drawn by a craving they can hardly articulate or understand to undiscovered lands and new worlds. Herman Melville in Moby Dick spoke for wanderers in all epochs and meridians. He said, I am tormented with an everlasting itch for things remote. I love to sail forbidden seas. Since we first emerged a few million years ago in East Africa, we've meandered our way around the planet. There are now people on every continent and the remotest islands. From pole to pole. From Mount Everest to the Dead Sea. On the ocean bottoms. And even, occasionally, in residence 200 miles up. Humans, like the gods of old, living in the sky. At 15 seconds, guidance is internal. 12, 11, 10, 9, ignition sequence start.
essential element of the human future, lies far beyond the earth.